Hello, everyone. My name is Bailey. Um, I'm going to be uh, kind of giving this seminar today. Um, I'm going to have my colleague Amber real quick come over. So she's going to be checking the chat, answering questions, um, if you guys do have any at any point in time. So, um, yeah, that's how you guys, uh, she's going to be just kind of answering any questions you guys might have um, in the chat. Um, but at the same time, too, like I said, I will be um, kind of here. Um, giving the presentation. So I'm going to begin sharing my screen with you guys, um, and then we're going to just go from there. So like I said, if you do have any questions at any point in time, please feel free to just let me know. Hope you go to the Visit UHM email. Yeah. Perfect. All right. One more second, and then we're good to go. All righty. So, um, for those of you who don't know the STAR GPS system, um, there's, uh, this is a kind of a demo that I'm on right here that I'm sharing my uh, screen with you right now. However, um, this is what it will look like when you're a student. Um, this will be populated, the academic essentials. Um, so this is my own personal one. Um, so we're not going to stay on that. Uh, but um, if you guys go to the STAR website, you can just look it up. It's pretty simple. So this right here, uh, www.star.hawaii.edu. Uh, that is the website, and then you guys are going to use that username that you were given um, or that you've already created for your Gmail account, and then use that password. So it's the same uh, login information for your guys' Gmail account, uh, so nothing's any, uh, any different there. Okay, excuse me. All right, so it's going to log you in, and it'll probably load this page first. So um, just to kind of explain what that is, this is your graduation pathway right here. So as you guys can see, um, for this uh, particular demo, uh, we've got a BA in Creative Media, you can see right here. Um, then you can also, give me one second, you can also see over on the corner here uh, that we do have the years right there. So um, currently we've got our grades from the 2018-2019 that have been completed, and then the next ones are going to be the 2019-2020, which is also going to be for you guys. So I know that um, all of you that are tuning into this session right now are going to be uh, incoming freshman, so you won't have any years completed. However, uh, what's really cool is you can check out your test scores, um, and those could be, you know, for your SAT or ACT, but also if you took any AP classes, you'll see those show up there. Um, and then you can also see your focus requirements. So these are the requirements for you to graduate. You need to have a total of five writing intensive courses, um, and two of those have to be upper division writing intensive. Um, so that usually means um, classes that require you to. Uh, at least write 10 uh, or more pages or uh, depending on if it's upper division, 20 to 25, um, you know, different uh, pages of like uh, essays, things like that. Okay. Um, and then you do also have a, a Hawaiian studies class that you'll have to take and then ethical issues and oral communication. Okay. So um, that's what it's going to look like uh, for your focus requirements. So you guys can see a variety of different things here um, on this site toolbar. Another thing to point out, too, is this top bar up here. Um, so for you guys, the biggest thing is just this kind of column right here um, that you're going to see. So I'm going to move my screen real quick because I can see myself right there. This class availability. Um, if you guys are looking for classes, you want to check things out, um, you know, you're not going to really need this yet. But once we go into registry for courses, this can be helpful. So we have all our different majors here. We have over 100 undergraduate degree majors um, at the University of Hawaii at Manoa. So there's a lot of different programs you can go into. And so with that, uh, you know, if you're even a biology major, like I was a marine bio biology person at UH Manoa uh, before I graduated. And uh, I took a lot of different courses in a lot of different areas because uh, you do have to meet certain electives, requirements, things like that. So, um, yeah, that's all. You're going to find all these different classes that you can kind of check out. So, you know, there's biology, but there's bioengineering, then there's biochemistry variety of different classes that you can take um, depending on you know what discipline you're in and also your elective requirements okay okay so um, you guys are you know you're gonna have an empty um, kind of setup you're gonna only your page is only going to show for 2019 2020 okay so on this GPS registration system okay you do have a couple other pages here academic essentials this will show um, once it's actually populated with your information it'll show the classes that you've already taken at UH um, also your AP credits and the amount of credits that you're needing still uh, so again like if we look back at mine real quick 
it would show this where you can see all the different credits I've accomplished, courses I've taken, also accomplishments of uh, yourself as a student if you made the dean's list. So that'll populate once you're a student and uh, you're registered. It might already be populated as well if you've taken AP credits or things like that. Uh, again, this is also going to reveal your four degree pathway. So this is really cool because, um, you know, whatever uh, degree you're in, um, it's actually going to give you your four degree for your pathway unless you're in the nursing program and might only show the first two years. Um, if you're pre-nursing, if you're not a direct admit or if you're in pre-engineering, it might only show the first two years. Uh, same with like Scheidler College because you're not if you're not a direct admit. Um, it won't show those next, those last two years. However, with most majors, it's going to give you all four years, which is really cool. So you guys can know, you know, every single class you need to take uh, from this fall 2019 all the way to uh, the spring of 2023, uh, because we, you guys are going to graduate in four years. We're going to try to make sure that that happens, um, that you're all going to graduate in four years. So, um, yeah, that's a really helpful thing. Uh, this Star GPS system was made in-house which is really nice because, you know, uh, we're constantly upgrading it and advancing it, but this is all made by the University of Hawaii of NOAA. So it's really cool. Um, and again, once we start registering for classes, I think you guys will see that it's pretty easy um, to do, okay? I see that we're, uh, I've got some more questions popping up here now in the group chat. Um, so we've got Amber on those right now, um, answering those for you guys. However, again, at the end, if we do have any extra questions we haven't answered, uh, we'll make sure to do so. Okay, so we kind of explained that. Um, also, though, real quick, before we actually go into the registration uh, purpose, um, this what if journey, say you want to switch your major, um, you can do that. Uh, but say you're like, uh, I'm not sure what it would do, um, you know, what classes I want to take. Um, you can always do a what if pathway or what if journey. And so even if you would like to double major, what's really cool is like, you know, we have a couple of these where it's like class option B. If you're going to do a double major in different things. So if you guys want to look into that, your what if journey, uh, if you want to minor, you want to major in something, uh, I would look into the what if journeys. Those are pretty cool. Um, and also, you know, it's a variety of there's undergraduate, which would be you guys. But then if you're not the graduate uh, law and professional level level. There's a variety of different options to choose from. So uh, and then these other ones, um, I'm not going to be able to access right now because I'm not. Uh, we're using the GPS demo, but you guys can check out those other tabs um, on your own profiles on the STAR website. Okay. All right. So uh, let's now go into um, the GPS registration, though. So it's recalculating. It'll always do that. Uh, and we're, you know, we're going to go past this. We're not trying to register for summer. We're trying to register for the fall of 2019. So we're going to click that here. Okay. That's the first step. All right, so right now, um, for those of you who, you know, you might not be able to register yet. So registration did open today. It is May 22nd. Um, however, your registration time may not be today. It might be tomorrow or the 24th, which is the last day. However, um, you know, it doesn't mean that all you can never register again for courses and, you know, like, and that you're done for essentially for the fall semester. Say you don't register for all, all the courses, um, you know, from these next two, uh, sorry, three days, you can still register for co courses up until uh, after the first week of school. Okay, so um, we just try to get your registration done because uh, we want you to make sure we can get you into classes. Uh, there are wait lists available. However, it's not fun to be put on a wait list. So we want to make sure you guys are getting into these classes. All right, so when you come to this, uh, this page right here, it's going to be your fall 2019 registration checklist. So uh, if you have any holds on your account, say you haven't paid your tuition deposit, things like that, you're not going to be able to register yet. Um, this one, I have to submit my emergency contact information. So I would do that. I would go update my student record, and then I would go in here. Now, because I'm in the demo, I won't be able to update this right now. Uh, same for you. Like, you know, say you're not registered, your, your timetable is not up yet. Don't worry. We can actually still go in and we can preview our registration. So. Anybody can do this, uh, whether, you know, your registration is open yet, you can do the preview registration. So that's what we're going to do now. So you guys can see kind of what it looks like to register for course. So we're going to continue to preview. Okay. Um, so I'm, I'm going to undo all these edits that I made yesterday, undo all these classes so you guys can see what it's going to look like to re-register for them. Okay. All right. So this is what yours is going to look like, except your requirements are going to be different. So these are the requirements for uh, me being, a, I think, a creative media uh, major um, or, yeah, creative media. So uh, film. 
But your guys are going to be slightly different depending on what major you're going into and also because all of you are going to be incoming freshmen. Um, you know, your courses are, are going to be different. Right. So I'm just going to start. And okay. Cool. Amber is helping me make sure I'm not shouting you guys' ears. Sorry about that. Uh, but anyways, going on. So really want to make sure you guys know um, setting up your schedule is a really cool thing. So I was once a student like you. Uh, and, you know, like when I was an incoming freshman, it's like I'm not doing those 7.30 classes, 8.30 classes. So I, you know, I set my schedule up. So I was – Friday was 10.30. Um, so, uh, you know, like you can do if you want. But uh, I would just make sure you guys register for your uh, major courses. So like this one, so design the creative media uh, major in this demo. I would I wouldn't gonna register for these two courses because they're more directed towards my major first. Because like things like the second language courses, there's a lot of those, right? Um, also things like you know biological sciences. Uh, for mine, I have to take a general a general level, so you know that one's not that one's uh, that one's not like a necessary thing that needs to happen. Um, you know, like right away, I can make sure I register for my creative media courses first. And then add those biological science courses afterwards. So I'm going to start by just selecting this one. So this is what the, the page will be opened up to. So see, as you guys can see, there's only four of these courses here. I don't know what that was. But um, yeah, as you can see, there's only four of these courses here. So make sure, um, again, that you're looking at those major required courses because these are only offered from you know certain days. This one's Friday. This one's Friday, Thursday. And this one hasn't been announced yet when it's going to be offered. So there's only three of these courses. So if I populate all of my other classes first, I might not, you know, might not have room in my schedule to fit these classes. And so I'd rather do these ones first. So I'm just going to select this one. Okay. And so uh, you guys might notice now it populates my Google Calendar over here. Uh, and what's really cool is after you add all your courses, you can actually um, add your classes to your Google Calendar officially. Um, so I added that first one. Um, ACM 360, it's Indigenous Aesthetics, um, and that's going to be on Friday. So I'm like, okay, great. You know, I could uh, limit this and select which day I want it on. However, if I do that, say I do it on Monday, there's only courses offered on Friday, Friday, and Thursday. Um, you know, it's going to show no courses available. It's going to show the one that I registered for, but as you can see, this TBA one is not available yet. It's going to be online, but I don't know if I can do that yet. And so. That's one thing you can do if you're, you know, saying you're wanting, you're gonna like customize your schedule to where it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Then uh, you're you're only finding classes that are Monday, Wednesday, Friday. So real quick, I'm gonna add my other major course here, which is gonna be the screenwriting or oral. And I click that, and as you can see, there's only three of these classes too. So again, that's why I stress like make sure you sign up for major courses um, the, uh, in the beginning, and then sign up for those secondary courses like language. Or your elective courses um, afterwards. Okay, so uh, I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, okay, all these are at Wednesday, 1:30 to 4:20. Uh, so there's only one class to select, so I'm going to select that there. Okay. All right. So as you guys can see now, if you check my Google Calendar, um, it's changed slightly. So now I have a class on Friday and I've got a class on Wednesday. Okay. All right. So I'm not registered for those classes just yet because this is again a preview mode. Um, so, uh, but we're gonna we're getting what it looks like, and essentially we're going to the final point. But I won't be able to like register for courses because it's preview mode. All right, we're now going to my electives because um, now that I've registered for or added my uh, major courses, I'm now going to check out some electives that are available. So there are a lot of these, as you can see. This list goes on and on and on because electives especially even in a major, but also electives that I can take uh, that, you know, meet that requirement are kind of endless. I can even go here where it says load more courses, and then it's going to load some more. Um, however, I don't think we necessarily need to do that. But yeah, there's a lot of different courses I can choose from. As you can see, this part gets smaller now. There's a lot of different courses I can choose. So I'm going to go back up to the top, though, because I'm going to I'm going to set my filters. So as you guys can see from my Google Calendar over here, I've got classes on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, or sorry, excuse me, Wednesday and Friday so far. I'd like to stick with that. So I'm going to go over here to my filters. I'm going to click Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Okay. 
And I'm just going to press search because that's for now that that seems like a good idea to set those. Okay. All right. So still a lot of courses. We go down to the bottom. You can still see I can load more courses. So we're going to go back to the top, and I'm going to you know set my filters a little bit more. Okay. So uh, I've got a free gap from 11:30. Uh, to about 1.30, uh, because that's in between my courses over here, the one that's on Friday when it ends, and the one that ends on or begins on Wednesday. So I'm going to set those time limits. It's got to be in that time gap right there. Okay, because as you guys can see, there's things like this. This is a time conflict, time conflict. Okay, so I'm setting those up. It's got to be somewhere in those times. So a lot of these show a time conflict. The reason why is because they end, let's see what this one. So when we add it, you can see it adds over here. So it's a time conflict because of the fact that it starts right at 11.30 and this course begins right at 11.30. So we can adjust this slightly, let's say 12 to 1.30 p.m. Okay, so I'm not going to take this course right here, even though it says I'm, uh, I've selected that. I'm going to actually look at these other ones. Okay, so this art course requires a prereq. However, I might be able to get into it. I could email the professor, and if the prereq uh, isn't a necessary requirement, then they may let me in. However, uh, it might, all, might not always work. However, botany seems like a good elective. Now, some of you may ask, you know, hey, how do I know which elective is the right? I think I actually saw that question down there. Um, which 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 elective you know should I take? So if you guys actually go on to your department websites um, and you can actually look at their advisor, you can contact an advisor. Um, so if you're in the biology department, one really cool thing I'm familiar with him because I was a student underneath the biology department. You can actually set up a phone call uh, advising meeting. Um, other departments don't necessarily have that. However, they do have a phone number that you can always call and ask any questions. Um, and so if you're wanting to meet with an advisor, you can either do that by email or by phone. So look into that because, um, yeah, as some of you have mentioned, it can be difficult to know, wait, you know, is this is this the right elective for me? Uh, and then you can check. Again, also that STAR GPS system will help you figure out if that's the right elective for you to do. Um, for today, we're going to stick with this botany class as our elective. Um, you know, say I already met with my advisor and they confirmed that this is a good elective for me to sign up for. So I've selected it and then I'm adding that to my calendar over here. Okay. All right. Now I'm going to uh, go over to the biological and physical. So I need to take that requirement. Now this one's pretty nice because if these classes are uh, biological or physical, uh, most of them will meet that requirement um, already. So i I don't usually have to check uh, with my advisor to make sure I'm meeting that requirement. All right, so it looks like I have a lot of time conflicts because of Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Most of these are Tuesday, Thursday. Unfortunately, it looks like I'm not going to be able to work out my schedule to where I'm going to have this Monday, Tuesday, Friday classes. But that's okay. So it looks like I'm going to add comparative nutrition as part of the um, animal sciences department. Okay, so it looks like I added those courses right there. However, I have to make sure, um, because I have a science lab that I need to be part of it, that hopefully there's a lab that can give it. Okay, so if we go back, I signed up for um, animal science. I'm use a couple of here to go over. 244 was the course. Okay, and it looks like I don't necessarily see a lab that goes with that. So I might go back, say, okay, I'm gonna change it. Because usually it's just to take a class if it's assigned a lab. If you go and just take a random science course without taking a lab with it, um, or taking the, the same lab with it, it can be a little bit difficult, okay? So I'm looking at these, looking at these. Okay, you know what? Astronomy, survey of astronomy, that seems like a cool class to take. I'm gonna sign up for that one. And I think I saw a lab for it as well. So let's go look for that. Let me go over real quick again. Astronomy 110. 
And it looks like this one's going to be on Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. So in astronomy, you're looking at the stars and planets. So that's understandable why it's going to be so late. So you can't see it right now, but it's showing up on the Google counter because it's all the way down here. Okay. But remember, afterwards, you can always add it to your Google calendar and you can kind of expand that selection and it'll make it easier to see. Okay. All right, so it looks like I've, you know, pretty much registered for most of my course, or excuse me, added all my courses uh, up to this point. Now I'm going to go into my second language. Okay. So uh, for this one, um, you know, most of you uh, might start, you know, in Spanish 101. I wasn't really, you know, or like some, you know, 101 class, like, you know, uh, Mandarin 101 or, you know, Simone 101 or uh, Alolo Hawaii, which is, you know, the native Hawaiian language 101. I started in Spanish 101 because I took three years in high school and I said, yo, why take multiple, you know, different languages when I can't even master one? So that's what I did, kind of just stick it and just make things easier. When I took the uh, placement exam for uh, the language test uh, for Spanish, I just transferred directly into 101s. Um, you know, like I said, I wasn't the best in languages. However, you know, maybe you know Arabic and you're really good at that. So you can test directly into Arabic 201 using the placement exam or even 202 or even, you know, 301. So I encourage you guys, if you are good with languages, then take the placement exams. Um, you know, take the placement exam no matter what, see how you do and see what class you can go into. Uh, that's kind of a different, uh, separate thing, placement exam. So I'm not going to go over that too much today. However, you can always just go click on the new tab and go into Google and search up UH Reno placement exams. Uh, we've got placement exams for math, for chemistry, and also for our languages. So if you already know a language, like say you know Mandarin, it might be helpful to take that placement exam. So you that way you don't have to sit in those 101, 101 courses where you're like, ah, I already know all these things. Okay. So look into that. Uh, we do offer a lot of different languages, over 25 different languages here at the university. So there are a lot to choose from. Okay. All right. So, again, all these say that they have a prereq because, uh, you know, you either have to take the placement exam or you have to take 101 and 102 to transfer into the 201 course. You have to pass those classes with a C. I think it's a C or above. C minus is not transferring to those courses. So, um, I'm just going to say that I took Italian 101 and 102. And so now I'm going to go and take intermediate Italian, which is the 201 course. I'm going to sign up 9 a.m. That's a little bit early, but you know what? It's not as early as high school, so I think I can sign up for that course. Okay. So right now, my schedule is actually full. You guys can see it here. Okay. I've signed up for all my courses. Um, however, I can always go and look at, you know, say I'm like, ah, oh, you know, maybe I want a better look at the Italian courses that are offered because this might be a little bit, you know, like the, the filters that you added may not be what you're looking for. So what you can go is you can actually go into here. This is that class availability um, list. Okay. I'm just going to move the chat box real quick. All right. So uh, we're going to look for our Italian. Where is it? There it is. Perfect. Okay. So here I can see Italian 101, Italian 101, and an Italian 201. So those are the only courses currently offered for this coming fall. So there's only one time it looks like to choose from, which is the 9 to 10, 15 that I chose. However, um, you know, depending on how popular the language is at the university, there's going to be more courses available. So if I was, you know, say I had taken Spanish and I would go look at that and I'd see a lot more co courses that are going to be offered. So as you can see, we have a lot of students that will take, you know, elementary Spanish and intermediate Spanish at the university. And so there's a lot more courses and a lot more times offered. You can see over here. You know, there's a lot more times you can choose from. So say you're an early bird and you like to get up 830. My might, might not even be that early for you, but you can start your class at 830. Or say you're kind of, you know, a late bird. You can take a class at 130. Kind of up to you. Okay. All right. So um, just so you guys kind of know, you have that availability. The class availability can be nice, but certain QPS registration system uh, kind of makes it pretty, like, you can always look up. Spanish. Okay, and to bring up intermediate Spanish because that's the one, next one I'm going into. Because I was, you know, let's, let's assume that I took 101 and 102. I also can again, you know, make sure I add those times in, and I'm gonna see if I can take a class in between. What did my, what is my next class? Begin? 
So it's 9.30 is when my first class on Monday, Wednesday, Friday begins. So got it in for 9.30. So we can search that. Okay, there's one Spanish class that meets that. It keeps the course that you've already clicked um, up at the top uh, because that way you can compare the current course that you're kind of signed up for um, and then the course you're, you're looking at that you might want to sign up for. Okay. All right. But we're just going to stick with Italian. So we're going to say that's okay and not worry about adding any more uh, filters or anything like that because we selected our final course. All right. Let's see if we can. I think somebody might have accidentally annotated. Perfect. Thank you for taking that off. Usually those things are disabled, but sometimes they have a malfunction. Okay. So just want to make sure you guys are good to go. Um, at this point, we're going to check out because, you know, I've registered and I'm good to go. Once, uh, you know, once you've registered and it is your registration time and you're not in preview mode, because again, as you can see, I'm in pre preview mode up here. Um, once you're not in preview mode because your registration time you know, is ready and you don't have any holds on your account, uh, it'll actually give you the balance for all these courses. Now, just so you guys know, 12 to 19 courses uh, is all the same, right? So you don't have to pay more or less money uh, depending on, you know, if you're taking 13 credits versus 14 credits or 16 or 17, 12 through 19, you're going to pay all the same amount, okay? Sometimes there are lab fees if you sign up for a lab course, uh, depending on what the lab is going to require for you to do. So you do have to pay lab fees, um, but like I said, most of the time, those 12 through 19 are going to, it's going to be the exact same unless you have to take, you know, unless the class has additional fees for you. Okay. So total charges will give you the total sum and the remaining balance will see, will give you how much you have to pay. And then you can view and pay. Now, again, I can't do that right now because we're in preview mode. Uh, but we're going to go down here. We can look and everything. And once we've decided that we're good to go, we can submit. And then that's when we can actually add all those courses to, um, to our Google Calendar and for the next incoming fall. So we're good to go. If at any point in time, you know, I want to drop a class, then I can, I press undo, okay? And it'll drop that course right there. And then I can just submit. And then I've only, you know, now I only have, let's see, five courses that I've signed up for instead of six, okay? Say you want to sign up for a personal choice, you can just put that here. And you it's personal choice, you can select the course. Because maybe, you know, you have 15 credits on your, uh, star GPS and you want to take 18 credits so you can do that personal choice and you have another class you want to take you can do so um, by just selecting that personal choice and then it's, again select you know introduction to accounting if that's the class you want to add and then again you'd go to checkout when you're done and then you would go to submit and add drop classes or down here submit and add drop classes okay but again make sure you guys are adding classes that are part of your graduation pathway so we'll go back to that one last time So as you can see, these are the courses I already took, which are right here. These are the courses that are recommended for me to take for the upcoming semesters for fall 2019 and spring of 2020. Okay, so in total, um, right now it looks like I'm about 16 credits. That's what these are estimated to be, depending on which courses I want to sign up for. However, it's not finalized because I have not registered for those courses yet. Once you do actually register for those courses, it'll show that you're signed up. Um, for the next semester, it looks like I, you know, have 12. So I can also do this. Say so I want to take my language course. Excuse me, no, I'm not going to take that. I'm going to take my elective and move it over to there. I can always do that too. So if you guys want to work, you know, move around your schedule a little bit too, you can always do that. Again, contact an advisor if you would uh, like additional information about, you know, how you may be able to work your rework your schedule, especially if you want to take a class but you have a time conflict with another class. You can always, you know, like kind of move your schedule around to make sure that you're good to go there. Okay. Um, with that being said, um, if you do have any questions, please feel free to add them into the chat box this time. Um, Amber's working hard to answer all those questions for you guys. Um, and then uh, this is being recorded. So if you guys need to reference it again, we're going to be sending it out within the next 24 hours. Uh, sometimes we have to, you know, clean up the editing a little bit. Uh, but, you know, and we'll also be sending out the chat. Uh, attached with that email. So you guys need to look back at it or you do have any other questions that rise up that maybe someone asked earlier in the chat, then you can reference the chat again. Okay. Um, with that being said, though, uh, to make sure that Amber can keep answering the chat, uh, we're going to keep 
uh, the stream alive, uh, the live stream alive right now. Um, but you can always exit out if you're done for the day um, and, you know, kind of go and actually register if your timetable is ready. Do you guys don't know whether you're, um, you know, you can register for courses yet? Again, just go to this register and add drop courses. And it'll show you guys if you guys, if your registration time is, is available and you guys can actually press continue. And then that's when you can begin registering for your courses. Okay. All right. Um, again, with that being said, if you have any questions, please let us know. Also, if you guys do have any you know, questions or concerns, you can uh, email us at visit UHM email. So I'm going to type that just uh, to everyone here. Visit UHM at, at uh, hawaii.edu. Okay, uh, so say you don't get your question answered here, but you can always email us there at that email, um, and that way you can make sure you're receiving you know, direct information from us. Um, and that way it just allows us to communicate with you because this is our job and this is something we enjoy doing is helping you guys be successful.